so a new slavery after a new slavery west african mainland and challenges my name is fiona vernal i am a professor in the history department and the africana studies institute i've been here at the university of connecticut since 2005 i got my phd in african history from yale University and I currently teach a full suite of courses on um, African history including pre-colonial Africa, modern Africa, uh, South Africa as well as courses on uh, human rights. So in 2015, you know, I haven't been here for about 10 years, my students were very bored and I was teaching my favorite class and a, and a very popular class here on the history of South Africa, it's very easy for students to um, to find the course and to register for it because they know about Nelson Mandela, they know about apartheid, right? So it should have been a really easy experience for me to reach the students, but they were bored. They were also um, concerned about the relationship between the class and their future careers. What we, how the information they take from the class? What was this going to? do to help them to um, find a job. And I'd heard these misgivings and concerns of students uh, before, but the fact that it was manifesting in my class and that I wasn't being very effective in my lectures and in my assignments and that I wasn't reaching students made me um, rethink how I could reach them. Um, and so we paused and had a conversation about what their anxieties were. Um, the market had crashed right in 2008 and uh, history as a major um, and, and the humanities in general was facing a lot of um, low enrollment um, issues and it's precisely because of the larger concerns of the students that mm -hmm. if they get a humanities degree how are they going to translate that into a job mm -hmm. which meant that as a professor how am I going to translate history into a set of skills and so mostly because I was concerned about what my students um, weren't doing in my class, I decided to create different kinds of assignments because blue book assignments and final papers were not gonna cut it anymore. They wanted something where there was a specific skill set attached to it. Um, it was something that they could put on their resume, right, that they could be a project director, a project coordinator that would show time management or experience with project management, that they would help with the graphic design and layout and that they could put that um, as a skill. So with my students' help, I came up with uh, new assignments and the new assignment was to take them into the archive and to introduce them to a particular set of primary sources around South African history. and. When we mounted that exhibit, um, there were representatives here from the Ramana Foundation at the University of Connecticut, and they saw that exhibit. And after having some discussions about what we could do with the Romano paper, um, the idea came up that we wanted a student-engaged um, project. And I think the journalism department is doing its own its own project around around photojournalism, but I wanted to craft something around history, mm -hmm. and I looked into the collection and decided to design a new course that would use um, some of Romano's um, papers and um, some of his uh, images. Mm -hmm. So that's how this particular um, exhibit uh, came about. It was two years. <laughs> it was two years in the making. <laughs> One of the most important things that we can do, especially as the humanities are under threat, is to communicate very cl very clearly to the public the relevance and the purpose um, of history. And the historians are, you know, really excited about conventional kinds of um, primary sources, but they also need to do a much better job of um, talking across discipline. So this opportunity that the Romano Collection um, provides to combine history and film and media studies, right, and photography um, is very, very important. 
And so the students had to do, uh, had to conduct a lot of um, background research, and so they were able to um, go into the Romano archives and see the research that he conducted. I mean, he had to do a lot of historical research before they ever got to um, filming the documentary *The Dark Side um, of, Ch of Chocolate*, and in, and his historical research also informed the kind of images that he wanted to um, capture. He had particular narratives and stories in his mind about the exploitation of children um, across the globe that helped to inform the kind of specific images um, that he captured. I think probably one of the best examples of this is the machete panel that we did um, in the exhibit where in addition to um, open-ended shots that he did um, where you can see children um, holding machetes, he also staged children um, with their um, machetes so that you could get their names and their um, their residences and then you can see what they look like uh, with their particular machete. So I think the collection is very um, important because once you go into the archives you see how important history is even for a photo photojournalist and somebody who's interested um, in film and the students were able to see that um, as well. The other thing that the students were able to see was where his research left off, right? So this documentary um, came out, it's, it's going to be almost um, two decades, um, um, almost two decades since the Harkin Engel um, protocol came out. A lot of these um, companies have until 2020 to make a lot of those changes in their um, global supply chain and the students were able to see what inspired Romano 10 years in when there weren't a lot, there wasn't a lot of progress, and also to see what has happened between 2010 um, and the new anniversaries that are coming up um, in in 2020, and so I think working on this um, exhibit, through working on this exhibit, the students were able to see that there is a relevance, right, to the kind of research that historians do. And there are different kinds of audiences, and not just your professor that you're going to present your exam to, but there are different audiences um, for this research, and that there is a really um, important role for historians um, to play in helping to document human rights 